words from today's gospel. Credit to Erigo Primum Regnum Dei. Seek first, therefore, the kingdom of God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The epistle and gospel insist that we should not allow our lives to be divided between the opposing principles, that of the spirit and the flesh, nor that we should have two masters, but we should have one. Therefore, we must choose God and the things of God. If we want to be eternally happy, we must first seek the kingdom of God and his justice, as the gospel tells us. But the question is, how do we do that? The answer is, we must live a spiritual life. In the spiritual life, there are different degrees. There are the beginners, the proficient, and the perfect. These three degrees correspond to the different stages in the Christian life. And the masters of the spiritual life give us three stages, or three degrees. There are the purgative, eliminative, and unitive way. So using St. Teresa of Avila as our guide, let us look at the explanation of the state of the soul in the spiritual life through the imagery of what she calls the interior castle. And in this interior castle, there are seven mansions, and these seven mansions are divided into the three ways, the purgative way, the limitative, and the unitive way. And by looking at this, I think we can have an understanding, or at least gather a superficial understanding of the degrees of the spiritual life, and it will help us to gauge where we are situated in our pursuit of holiness. It will also reveal to us where we should be in our spiritual life and in our holy endeavor in seeking the kingdom of God. So firstly, the purgative way. When the soul resolves to live the spiritual life, it has entered the purgative way. This group of souls are considered the, begin the beginners. In this purgative way, St. Teresa divides this, this part of the interior castle into the three mansions. In the first mansion, she says, souls, these souls, these mansions consist of souls who struggle and given easily to mortal sin, but sincerely repent through good confessions, even though they do not make any effort to avoid venial sins. They voluntarily place themselves into occasional sins their prayer is merely vocal and is full of distractions. The souls in the second mansion, we find good souls who valiantly struggle against mortal sin. They still commit deliberate, deliberate venial sin because they are weak and their repentance is superficial. These souls sometimes frequent Holy Mass during the week, but with little preparation. They still pray vocal prayer, although at times they attempt to make meditation and mental prayer. The third mansion comprised of those pious souls who rarely commit mortal sins, and their repentance is profound. They take precautions to avoid a relapse. They sincerely combat venial sin and make use of particular examine. They attend Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion daily. They often, often with the spirit of routine, though. Such souls pray the daily, the daily rosary, they make visits to the Blessed Sacrament, and pray the Stations of the Cross. But they readily omit meditation, especially in times of dryness or when too busy. The second degree, if you will, is the illuminative way. When the soul is decided to enter upon a life of solid piety and to advance along the way of virtue is entered upon the illuminative way. These souls are considered the proficient, which consists of the fourth and the fifth mansion, according to St. Teresa's reckoning. The fourth mansion the fervent souls who are in the fourth mansion never commit mortal sin. They can exercise great care to avoid venial sin and is rarely fully deliberate when they commit a venial sin. They make particular examine of themselves as a means of combating all venial sin. However, in order not to be obliged to combat them, they avoid examining the conscience on the perfections that they have. The daily Mass and Communion are accompanied by a fervent preparation and thanksgiving. They are diligent in their weekly confession. They seek spiritual direction in order to make progress in virtue, and they have attended devotion to Our Lady. 
the fifth mansion. In this mansion, we find souls that are relatively perfect. They never commit a deliberate original sin, although sometimes they may fall by surprise or lack of attention. There may be some deliberate imperfections, but they are quickly repented of. Charity is beginning to have a more intense and a more actual influence on everything they do. They are lovers of solitude. The life of prayer is so habitual that it is as natural as breathing. They have reached the contemplative prayer of union with God. The third way is the unitive way. The unitive way is when the life of prayer becomes, as it were, the very breathing of the soul, even when engaged in work and the duties of state. Intimate union with God and the attainment of complete Christian profession Perfection is all that the soul lives for, and thus the soul has entered the unitive way, the way of the perfect. And here we have the last two mansions. The sixth mansion consists of heroic souls. They never commit deliberate imperfections. At most, they're only partially deliberate and they're quickly rejected. They perform all the practices of virtue with fidelity. They are concerned only with being united intimately with God. They have a great thirst for suffering and the penitential practices are severe. Frequently they offer themselves as victim souls to God and in their life of prayer contemplation is practically habitual. In the seventh mansion we find the great saints in whom imperfections are scarcely seen. Their practices of piety have been reduced to the simple Exercise of love, as St. John of the Cross says, quote, Now loving is my only exercise. End quote. Their love has reached an incredible intensity, but it is still tranquil. They enjoy peace and serenity, and they are profoundly humble. In their prayer life, they enjoy what St. Teresa describes as a certain intellectual vision of the Blessed Trinity in the soul. So now we looked at the seven mansions. Now let us, by way of conclusion, seek first the kingdom of God and his justice and all these things should be added unto you, as our Lord says in today's gospel. He is telling us not to be anxious about anything because of his providence. He looks after us and he cares for us. And he emphasizes that we should focus more on our soul rather than the body. So let us focus on the soul, the spiritual life. Let us choose to be on which side, the flesh or the spirit, on which master the, the God or mammoth. If we choose the riches and honours of the world, then we become obviously odious to God. But if we choose God, we will hate and despise the passions of the flesh, riches and honours, and consequently we will choose the spiritual life. Let us therefore pray to our Holy Mother in Heaven, who always sought the Kingdom of God in every moment of her life. May she grant us the grace and strength to persevere in living the spiritual life. God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.